News 8 update. With Iola Johnson, Tracy Rowlett, Troy Dungan with weather, and Dale Hanson on sports. Four National Guard units from Texas will soon be playing war games in Central America. The Pentagon has called them up for military training in Honduras. Good evening, everyone. Tracy has the night off. I'm John Criswell. Governor Mark White says he has asked for more information about Operation Big Pine 3 because he's concerned about the safety of the Texas Guardsmen. The story from Channel 8's Carol Neeland. This is the sort of training exercise Texas National Guard members go through periodically. This one was in Gulfport, Mississippi, but they've also been to similar exercises in Germany, South Korea, Turkey, and Italy. The idea is to be sure they're ready should they be called up to fight. For the past three years, the Defense Department has called National Guard troops to Honduras to ready them for possible action in Central America. Up to now, no Texans have gone there. However, 450 Texans are due to go to Honduras in early April for what they're calling an anti-armor field training exercise. They'll be taking 120 vehicles with them. Officials say the Texans were picked over National Guardsmen in other states because they were more suited to the Honduras exercise, one of the prerequisites being that they speak Spanish. As for the danger in going to Central America in these troubled times, the head of the Texas National Guard, Major General Willie Scott, told me on the phone, I always worry about them, but I think it's more dangerous in Germany. You've got the terrorists over there. It's all relative. You do what's good for America, you know. Governor Mark White has asked well, we, the Defense Department for reassurances, but right. says it looks like an important mission to him, too. Uh, they've always been used in every war this country's ever won. They call it the National Guard. They're an integral part of our national security system, and we want to make certain that they're going to be not only first rate, uh, as I know them to be, but also that the state of readiness is going to be one that will make them a viable part of our national security. For the Texas troops, the Honduras exercise this spring takes the place of their regular annual training in the summer at Fort Hood. Carol Nealon, Channel 8 News, Austin. In Fort Worth, a new city manager has been named after a nationwide search. The council made its decision this afternoon after a two-hour closed-door session. But from our newsroom in Fort Worth, Channel 8's John McKay tells us while a choice has been made, the controversy over it continues. John? Iola, the new manager is 44-year-old Douglas Harmon, currently the city manager of Alexandria, Virginia. He was one of two finalists for the job. But just as the search ends, there is talk Harmon's color is what won him the position. You see, Harmon is white. The other finalist, acting city manager Vernell Stearns, is black. And there has been grumbling that is why he lost. Uh, the skin color has nothing to do with that right now but myself. But I Despite Mayor Boland's statement to before today's yeah. vote, blacks and Hispanics yeah. still believe race played a part in the decision. For days, there have been reports Boland and others on the council were being pressured by a few local business leaders, claiming Fort Worth was not ready for a black city manager. Today, Boland and four others on the council voted for Harmon, but the mayor claimed Harmon's experience was the reason. Somebody that had the on hand that I could see the experience. I think Vernell Stearns has those talents. There's no question about it in my mind. But the other has had nine years to show us what he could accomplish. The decision was the first major division among members of a council that has managed to work together for months. For Stearns, it was a disappointment that sent a message to the city's minority communities. A vote for me would have been uh, a positive uh, indication to young blacks and other minorities that uh, our society and our city has reached the age where uh, credit is given to uh, character and experience and all those good qualities. Uh, that's the decision that I think uh, would probably have been the best for the young black kid. Councilman Louis Zapata, a stern supporter, echoed that, calling the decision a step back for the entire community. Well, I think that the hiring practices of Fort Worth uh, uh, leave a lot to be desired. They're good, but they're not that good. Zapata, however, has pledged to work closely with the new city manager to improve opportunities for minorities in Fort Worth. Stearns has also promised his support and says he'll move back to assistant manager when Harmon comes aboard next month. Channel 8's Robert Riggs reports from Virginia that Alexandria city manager is looking forward to the challenge facing him in Fort Worth. Alexandria and its city hall is steeped in history. The man running it for the last nine years had to strike a balance between booming development and preservation. 
Douglas Harmon's first job as Fort Worth city manager will be restoring peace. They don't know me. I have not had the opportunity to spend very much time, but with just a very few people. And uh, uh, so it's, I think, a very understandable reaction. And uh, uh, if I were in their shoes, I would probably react the same way. Alexandria, in comparison to Fort Worth, is 15 times smaller, one-fourth the population, one-third the municipal workforce, and spends two-thirds of the Fort Worth budget. Harmon has planned its new subway and preserved cobblestone streets laid out by a young surveyor named George Washington. He acted very much as a spark plug, uh, if you will, in, in making us enthusiastic about uh, the projects that we had under our noses, for which we probably had gotten uh, a little used to. This is the $3 million masterpiece of Harmon's public works portfolio. Alexandria converted a retired World War II torpedo factory into art studios. Artists draw thousands of visitors. That, in turn, attracts private development, $25 million worth thus far. Harmon is an artist in his own right, the Doonesbury of City Hall. With a pen sharper than his tongue, he lampoons such things as the argument over where to build a new city library. What I did was to, uh, in fact, uh, make it into a zeppelin of some sort so we could then move it around the city so that you would have, in fact, equal service to all parts of the city. Just imagine the cartoons he will render of Fort Worth stacked up traffic on the downtown I-30 overhead. Harmon has been hired as Fort Worth city manager because he successfully revitalized the colonial past here. Now he must do it in Cowtown. Robert Riggs, Channel 8 News, Alexandria, Virginia. Harmon plans to leave his Virginia post as soon as possible. He is scheduled to start here in Fort Worth sometime next month. John? All right, John, thank you. Instead of just complaining about traffic, some people in Collin and Denton counties are doing something about it. They're donating land to make Highway 121 a freeway. More than 100 residents went to Austin today to plead their case before the State Highway Commission. 121 is a crowded two lanes from DFW Airport to North Central Expressway in the city of Plano. We see that we have absolutely no choice. Our area is booming. It is growing in a well-planned way and we're willing to do what it takes to provide the necessary transportation facility for the economic and environmental well-being of citizens and businesses in our area. To sweeten the deal, a promised donation of 360 acres of right-of-way along Highway 121 valued at more than $31 million. And that sounded good to the State Highway Commission. I'm satisfied that you'll have pavement going faster on 121 than you can imagine. There's no reason not to do it. And the earlier we can get ahead of it, you know, both by right-of-way acquisition and getting pavement on the ground, you need it now, then the better off everybody will be. Although Chairman Dedman will be replaced soon, he assured the North Texas area residents they'll get their freeway. Also in Austin today, a House committee took up a bill that would give Texas farm workers unemployment compensation. It's something agricultural workers have had to live without they are, or when they're laid off from picking crops, that is, until now. Both farm owners and farm workers came to Austin for the hearing in the House Labor and Employment Relations Committee. Most of the testimony was in favor of the farm workers' cause. In this day and age, people will, stand, will still condone the economic discrimination or any discrimination against any certain ethnic group within the workforce. There was opposition from the Farm Bureau, a conservative co-op of farmers and growers. The Farm Bureau says it's unfair and too expensive to have to pay unemployment compensation for seasonal workers. But for unemployed farm workers in the Rio Grande Valley, the haggling in Austin seems far away. Channel 8's Gary Reeves reports tonight, the more immediate concern is, where will dinner come from tonight? In Hidalgo County, the Hernandez home is paid for, the result of many long years of hard work in the fields. But this winter, you won't find anyone from this house who even has a job in Texas. Electricity bill is 46 right now, and our phone bill is um, 36, and our gas bill is 40, and we don't have anything at the moment. Olga's father has gone to Mississippi to find work. The $200 he sends home each month is the only cash income they have. There are many in the Rio Grande Valley who do work, harvesting the broccoli and the lettuce that was planted just a few months ago. But the dark gray surrounding the field is what used to be citrus orchards. This time last year, a major freeze had killed not only all the fruit, but it damaged most of the trees. Experts predict it will be at least five years before the valley can possibly have a normal citrus crop again. So when the pickers came out to harvest the broccoli this morning, they were finished before noon, 
symbolic of the fact that there isn't nearly enough work here to support the thousands who need jobs. The crew leader here says this is the first time he's had a job for his workers in 10 days. At the Hernandez house, Olga and her mother quit job hunting long ago. They look at court rulings and new laws that could give them unemployment and workman's compensation pay with hope. But most people who qualified for such benefits after the freeze have exhausted them by now, and some have left for other states. Olga and her mother manage a little warehouse that distributes food to the jobless poor, and with the unemployment rate in this county alone at over 20 percent, that's some 26,000 people out of work. Right now, most depend on charity and the government to get by. It's not exactly what they want, but they have little choice. And they wonder if they'll have to wait for the trees to grow again before it will change. We had hard times, but never like this. Gary Reeves, Channel 8 News, the Rio Grande Valley. An insulation manufacturing plant in Belton has been hit with a lawsuit from the Texas Attorney General. Rockwell Industries is accused of more than 50 violations of the state Clean Air Act, releasing hazardous particles of insulation in the air, creating an almost constant nuisance to neighbors. Channel 8's Charles Duncan reported four months ago that residents near the plant had been unsuccessful in their numerous complaints to the State Air Control Board. But now the Attorney General is ready to seek the maximum penalty against the company, a $1,000 fine for each of the 50 violations. Rockwell officials have indicated they plan to try and correct the pollution problem. And a $3 billion lawsuit has been filed tonight against Union Carbide Corporation, but it's not over the deaths in India. Three residents of Institute West Virginia filed the suit on behalf of 10,000 others in that city. That's where Union Carbide has a plant that processes toxic methyl isocyanate. The suit says the plant has hurt residents' health and property values. No comment tonight from Union Carbide, which disputes reports of dangerous gas leaks at the Institute plant. More trouble tonight for Galaxy Airlines. Its fleet of three planes has been reduced by two-thirds in just two weeks. Next on the update, we'll tell you why federal investigators are especially interested in the circumstances of today's crash landing. Also, cat lovers now have a new way to protect their felines from a fatal disease. And Troy's chilling forecast will have us all looking for our snow scrapers.